In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, good people of God, and welcome to this new week. We are in the 32nd week in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. Today is Sunday, the 7th of November, 2021. It is the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. Good morning and thanks for joining us. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 17, verses 10 to 16. In those days, Elijah the prophet arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a pitcher. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal shall not be spent, and the pitcher of oil shall not fill, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not spent, neither did the pitcher of oil fill, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, taken from Psalm 146, the response to the psalm is, My soul give praise to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever. Justice to those who are oppressed. It is He who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My soul be praised to the Lord. The second reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9 verses 24 to 28. Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy place yearly with blood not his own, for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for men to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, 
will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel Acclamation Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. At that time, in his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go about in long robes and to have salutations in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the multitude putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, her whole living. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Genuine charity is only so when it gives its all. Genuine charity is only so when it gives its all. Dearly beloved of God, our readings this Sunday present three protagonists. A widow in the first reading from the city of Zarephath, Jesus in the second reading, and another widow in the gospel. These three that is, both widows and Jesus, perform a similar action, the act of giving, of charity. And in all three cases, they gave their all, their everything. Let us begin to analyze. In the first reading, the widow gave her all to the prophet Elijah. To provide food for the prophet, she spent all her flour and oil. The last she had, she spent all. We are told, she told the prophet, this is the last. This is what is left. I just need to eat this with my son and we die because nothing will be left. So if she gave it to the prophet, it means she gave her all, her everything. In the second reading, Christ offered himself as a sacrifice to take away sin, to bring salvation to humankind. He gave his all. He gave his life, his everything. And in the gospel, the widow gave two coins, but it was her all. All she had to live on. It was her everything. All this bring out the theme and key message of today. Genuine giving or charity is worth the name when we give our all, when we give without reserve our everything. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean you have to come and offer all your money or your monthly salary, wages or earnings in church? Let us have a proper understanding. Giving our all can be summarized 
in these five dimensions. One, giving sincerely. If we give our all, if we give everything without reserve, it means we give sincerely. It means we give our best. So when you give, beloved, be it in church or in your neighborhood or when you see someone along the streets, ask yourself, can I say in sincerity that this is the best I can give? Most times, though we give, you would be sincere enough to realize that we do not give sincerely, meaning it is never the best we can give. We can give much more. We can do better than what we do. So be careful. Parameter number one, to give our all, to give everything and without reserve, is to give sincerely. And to give sincerely means to give our best. Second, it is to give wholeheartedly. What does this mean? To give our all, to give everything without reserve, means we give wholeheartedly without grudgingly giving, without grumbling, without complaining, most importantly, without regretting. There are times that we give, beloved, and we regret. Have you ever had that experience that you give and perhaps when you return, you regret why you ever gave that much? Sometimes, perhaps, because we were pushed by the crowd or the circumstances of the moment and we gave amounts that normally we would not have given. And when we return home, we return in regret. It means we did not give wholeheartedly. Or perhaps you would have also had this experience that you had two notes in your pocket and you intended to give the lesser one but ended up putting in the greater figure in the basket. Then you regret. It means you did not give wholeheartedly. Parameter number three, to give our all to give without reserve and to give our everything is to give generously. That is, you are not compelled. It is a willing offer. It comes from you. You give happily. Parameter number four. To give our all, to give without reserve and to give our everything means we think more of the other and forget about ourselves. And parameter number five. To give our all, to give without reserve and to give our everything means we give not for show or for publicity. We give not because we want people to talk about it, but because we know we are giving to God. Let us go back to our three protagonists and try to evaluate from these five parameters. In the first reading, the widow gave sincerely. It was her best. In the second reading, Jesus gave his best, his life, just like the widow in the gospel. They gave wholeheartedly. The widow in the first reading gave wholeheartedly. She did not give grudgingly. She did not regret giving. She gave wholeheartedly. Jesus gave his life wholeheartedly, just like the gospel in the gospel, the widow. They gave generously. They were not compelled. It was a willing offer. They forgot about themselves and thought more of the others. The widow forgot about herself, forgot about her son, and thought about the prophet. Jesus forgot about himself and thought more of saving the entire human race. So you see, beloved, all the above make up the statement of St. Paul, God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. It is that giving of all that brings reward to our charity. Give and give your all. To conclude, all three of our protagonists gave their life. In the first reading, the widow lost her son in order to save the life of the prophet. This means she gave her life. In the second reading, Jesus gave up his life. In the gospel, the widow gave all she had to live on, meaning she gave her entire life. It is for this reason that this song has its meaning. Take my life and let it be. So, beloved of God, examine yourself and examine your charity. When you do charity, evaluate yourself on these five parameters. Then you will know if it is genuine charity. 
And I tell you, if your charity is genuine, based on these five parameters, God will bless you as he did to the widow in the first reading. Your oil and your milk and your flour will never run dry. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Happy Sunday. Give genuinely and God will bless you. <laughs>